hello guys welcome back and welcome to all the new people to the channel so if you are expecting me to call a top for bitcoin or to say a price for the top i'm sorry i'm not gonna be able to do that in this video but this video is going to be about how to actually spot the top when we are approaching it or when we actually uh, touched top already so the signs that I'm going to be looking for to try and predict the top when this happens now I have no idea if this is going to happen next week if this is going to happen in one year from now or if it's going to happen in three years from now I have no idea at this point because as of today I still cannot see the clues I'm looking for uh, that show how tops are formed so uh, to do that and before I start of course there's nothing that you can predict with 100% uh, accuracy so that just doesn't <clears throat> that just doesn't exist when reading charts but you you can do an assessment of probabilities and you can find um, uh, chart patterns that are uh, you know uh, saying that's very likely that we are uh, about to see the top or we saw the top already so for that we need to look at history of other bubbles and uh, I know uh, everybody has seen this chart already but this is the bubble model how uh, 80 or 90 percent of the bubbles how they form the pattern and the patterns that they uh, have right at the top before the big crash and uh, and the next bear market uh, after the top so how uh, what they all have in common is that they uh, they go up then they go parabolic then they go even more parabolic so they accelerate the higher they get the near from the top they get and then they touch the top and they crash very violently and then after that we have what's a, a, what's called a bull trap or a return to normal when it bounces hard again and it goes up but it cannot go as high as the previous top it, it can go anywhere but it cannot break the previous top so but it could get very very close from it or it could go uh, like this one it's close but not that close it's a little bit lower or it could sometimes we've seen that as well it'll go a little bit higher but it cannot stay above it and it'll crash again so this part of here I mean I'm sure you guys already know this because many many channels have talked about this even my channel long ago I've been showing this many times but uh, for the new people or people that don't know that's how you can spot uh, tops uh, looking 100% at the technicals and not fundamentals so we call this return to normal because everybody tends to think that we are going going back to normal and that and that we will break all-time highs again and continue higher because during the the bull run even though we've been parabolic many times already we have little crashes but we always recover and go higher see we have another crash here high and another crash but then we always recover and go higher and we've seen this happen so many times that you tend to think that it's just going to happen again we have another crash one more after all the crashes we've had on the way this is only one more and when it's going up everybody thinks we're going back to normal and we will break the all time highs that's why this is called the back to normal phase of the bubble but when we are going back to normal and you see that we cannot get to the all time highs or we cannot break the all time highs and we crash again then you have a, a, a big clue there that this could be the top now what happens in many bubbles as well is that well this is the tech bubble but you can see in you can see this in uh, many charts for many other bubbles sometimes what happens is that we have um, not only one time return to normal but we're gonna have it a few times it can go up almost to the all-time highs crash again 
then try to go back up to the all-time highs again and maybe we do a higher a higher high compared to this one you know but we can still not break the all-time highs and crash again and sometimes it'll try several times like getting very close from the top but that cannot break it and it'll crash so this um this phase of the of the bu of the bubble this uh the top of the bubble in when it's going through this stage this is also called all this here this crash this go up this crash this go up this crash this go up all these peaks here this phase of the of the market it's called uh consolidation distribution okay so you will see violent crashes and go back up quick and crash again and go back up this consolidation distribution it means that big companies uh, sorry uh, big uh, big investors uh, smart money big money they are they are starting to sell all their shares to the public <clears throat> when the public it's all you know overhyped and it's like all excited because this uh, this will never end and you know this is going to go to 1 million dollars per share and all these things that you see in the media at that time the big investors the real big money are going to start unloading their shares to the public because they know we are at the top so they start to sell big that's why <clears throat> we see these big crashes but then they sell big but not as big to to make a huge crash all at once because they want to have the opportunity to continue to sell for high prices so they will sell some here boom then the public will will hype it again and bring it back uh, back up buying dips it'll go back up and then the, the big money again boom it'll unload again and sell it to the public and then and then the public will buy it or will buy the dip again bringing it up and then the big money selling it again so they do it in parts so that they can sell uh for more expensive because if they sell all at once if they unload everything at once in one single candle this would be all the way down here to 80 percent less so they would sell uh, many of their shares you know they would be sold uh, lower and lower and lower and lower and lower every time if they unload all at once that's why they do it in parts and that's why we see this type of formations at the top and that's why it's called uh, um, consolidation distribution it's called consolidation because it goes like sideways a little bit so it goes down it goes back up it goes down so it's like going sideways and this part here can last uh, anywhere from you know one month to one year more or less or maybe not as much as one year it usually doesn't last for regular even for regular stop uh, stocks this doesn't even last one year so for crypto when uh, where everything happens so quick this i would guess this would this would last maybe from one week to i don't know couple months maybe i mean I, I don't know exactly but you get the idea it doesn't last that long like the bull market and the bear market it'll last much much longer than what it will that what the consolid uh, the consolidation distribution phase will last you get the you get the idea here I don't know exactly how long but it's not that long they will do it quickly uh, usually here so these are the clues that you can uh, you can try and spot when you see this happening uh, on the Bitcoin chart then you can start thinking this is uh, the top of the bubble and as of right now we could perfectly be here you know when we are already going parabolic but if you see you know in bitcoin we're having this type of uh, of patterns all the time like continuation patterns and up parabolic continuation pattern and up more parabolic so we could perfectly be somewhere here in the middle of the bubble so it could still go much 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 higher so going back to the bitcoin charts i hope this is clear what i'm trying to explain here when we were here back in uh, in the 3000 top all right so we had this first mega crash here i remember exactly this one uh we were going up and it, it started to accelerate and then it accelerated a lot here these are the daily candles so the two last days were boom, <clears throat> really high from from 2000 to basically 2700 so from 2000 to that was like $700 up in in a matter of two days that was huge back then 
and then we had this huge crash here. I did not sell anything here because I was already looking for these clues. I know how, how tops are formed, so I wanted to wait. I want to. I always want to wait for the return to normal phase and see what happens. So when we recovered here, we broke the previous high. So that was not the top. That was a clue that that's not the top because it was just been broken. Now we got a little bit higher, and then we had this other crash here. I wasn't uh, here. You know this. You could still not call this the top because. I wanted to wait for the bounce and see what happens. If it breaks the previous high, then it's not the top, but if it cannot break it, then it's probably it'll be. And what happened here, it did not get to the top. It did the perfect um, top formation. When we crash violently, then we go back up quick, but we cannot get to the all-time highs. We are, we are close, but not. So here, this was the first sign that was the top for Bitcoin. And if this was the top, this this should go into a bear market down to the previous bubble, the top of the previous bubble, which was 1,200. So what happened here, we had the first crash and return to normal. That, that was a bull trap very clearly. Then we had a second try there. We couldn't even get it. We couldn't even get as high as the previous one. So that was very, very clear. That was a, the, very clear. This was the top. So it. We had a huge crash here. We still recovered. I remember I sold on these tops here. On this, I sold some here at this top, and then we had this big crash here. We went back up. We went higher than the previous and the previous top, but still not we couldn't make it to the top. So this is every time was looking more and more like an accumulation distribution phase. I remember I sold a lot in this high here. People were buying dips here. I was selling tops here. <clears throat> this was very, very likely to be the top. That's how tops are formed, right? It was a perfect top. Then couldn't break it, back down, and then in the next try it did break it. So. I personally got back into the market uh, after we broke the 3,000 top here. So I was able to buy at 3,300. I bought back in because this is a signal that this was not the accumulation distribution phase of the bubble. It was only a normal, uh, what, what did I say? This was not the consolidation distribution. This was the, this was a, um, consolidation accumulation now the the balance of probabilities that this was the top it was very very high it was more than 90 percent probability this was going to be the top and 90 percent probability in trading is a lot so it didn't happen because as i always say there's nothing that's 100 percent probability i mean i've seen men playing poker i've seen things that are almost impossible and i see it i saw it happening it's when you have like 90 97% probability and still you know you it, it goes the other way and you see that happening three times in a row with more than 90% probabilities i mean nothing is impossible you will see that if you trade long enough if you play poker long enough you you you, you realize that there's no such thing as 100% probability in anything so uh, because nothing is 100% predictable, but you have to always play with your with the probabilities. Then, fine. We it broke the top here, so that was the time to go back in the market. I bought at 33. Me personally, then we went back up, and again continued to accelerate. If you see, it looks every time more vertical. We had a little crash here, but then it recovered, and no problems. It broke the previous high, so this could not be the top. And then again, we went up a little bit more, and then we had a bigger crash here. So let's see what happens after this crash, because if we break the, the previous all-time highs, then we're still running. We're still in the bull run. But if we get close to the previous high here and crash again, then this could be the top. Although this at this stage already it didn't look as much as a bubble because you see how not long before we had all this consolidation in bubbles if you if you look at the bubble model <clears throat> you don't have that much consolidation and then right after you're gonna have the top 
Now, if you have long consolidation here, it means you're going. You're, if we after this consolidation, we actually break the previous high, then this opens the door for, for this opens the door for going much, much, much higher. So usually you don't have this this consolidation this this consolidation part that close from the top. Close from the top, you have vertical movement. If you if you see here, so hope this is clear what I'm saying here. So. Just because we had this long consolidation here, this opened the door uh, when we broke this high, this opened the door for mega highs. Now, this was not high enough to be the very top because you know we just had this consolidation here very long. So moving on, then we went uh, continue to go up and uh, broke the previous high. So that was not the top already, because if that was to be the top, it means we would have come closer to the top and then crash from here, right? By probability. Now, from there, we continue higher. We had a little bit of a correction here, a little bit of a consolidation, no problem. And now we, uh, we break this out, so no top here. Then here we had another um, significant correction, but if you see, we... Uh, when we went up, we broke the previous high, so this is likely not to be the top here. Now we broke that one. Uh, we had a little bit of consolidation here, breakout. Now we're going very, very parabolic, but until we don't see, that's what I want to make clear, until we don't see a crash and then a return to normal, getting close from the previous high and crashing again, until I don't see the consolidation distribution, I'm not going to be calling the top. I call the top here at 3000 because this was the perfect top formation. If I see this happening now, I'm going to call the top again. And if I'm going to be wrong again, I don't care. I mean, I know there's nothing that's 100% predictable. So I'm cool with that. I'm cool with being wrong, uh, you know, a few times. But if I see this happening now, you can be sure I'm going to call the top. But until I don't see it, I cannot call the top until I don't see it. I need to assume continuation. And what I mean when I say continuation is I expect to bounce on moving averages and continue higher. So like we've seen here, touch moving average, go higher, bounce on moving average, go higher, bounce on moving average, go higher. So I will continue to assume continuation until I don't see uh, the patterns that you see in bubble tops. I don't see it yet. I need to continue to assume continuation because guess what? If you assume continuation, you will be right all the time until you are wrong. So when you are wrong, you will be wrong one time. But but if you continue to call the top and every time, then you will be wrong. You know, you will be wrong here. You will be wrong here. You will be wrong here. You will be wrong every time until the one time you're right. You eventually will be right. Of course, we will eventually have a top, of course. But if you're calling the top in every parabolic movement, then you're going to be wrong all the time until eventually you're right. But if you assume continuation, you will be right every single time until you are wrong. Eventually you will be wrong one time when, you know, when is the top. But by then you have to be looking for the clues that I just explained, uh, which is the consolidation distribution. When you see this type of patterns, you know, the crash and the return to normal, etc., 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 then you can start calling tops. I will do that when I see the patterns. So far, I don't see them. So guys, I think I'm going to leave this video here. Um, I hope it's clear what, what I'm trying to explain. If not, please leave your comments and questions down below and I will see you all very soon. Thanks, bye.